Greetings, my juicy subscribing tons. Welcome to the much awaited QA. We'll get straight into it with a question from Matthew. What do the various nationalists of Scandinavia generally think of their respective monarchs? And what do you think of monarchism itself? I can only speak for myself and I can only speak for the more right-wing or traditionalist nationalist line of thought and that is pro-monarchy. I am also pro-monarchy. Then of course there are plenty of nationalists who are against the royal house but uh, for me as I view it our royal house it's part of our heritage, it's part of our society, it's part of what makes Sweden great I was supposed to say. Um, what made Sweden great and the royal house is still one of these things that I do think they add more value to society than they do not. And if you look upon all the things emanating from the modern world, from clown world or from Swedish society, of everything you hear from Sweden, you never hear anything bad coming from the royal house or from the king. So imagine how many things he could have done in order to appease the powers to be or the current ultra leftist hegemony of thought. He hasn't done so. He has made some mistakes. He has said some things that are, you know, that I perhaps don't agree with. But overall, he has maintained a reasonable position. And for that, I salute him. Then also to keep in mind here is that the Social Democratic Party, which has been on and off in power over the last hundred years in Sweden, said from the beginning that they would abolish monarchy. But His Majesty the King has not gone anywhere, so that is um, quite skillful indeed to still be in his position, even though, the, even though the political establishment has been against him being there. So for me, personally, I support my king. I do like my king. I like the royal family. I think they do good work. Um, then, of course, they could have done certain things differently. No one is perfect. I am not perfect. The king isn't perfect. The queen isn't perfect, but they are still very good people. And especially our queen and our um, crown princess, very well liked by all regular decent people. Then, of course, various leftists do not like them, but all good people like them. In my view, at least. And another note I forgot to mention is that the royal family are working extremely hard, extremely much, and have done so for a very long period of time for the interests of the Kingdom of Sweden. As you can hear, my daughter agrees wholeheartedly. So that is important to point out when talking about the royalty. They're not just cruising around doing what they want. They, if anyone's, they are not doing what they want. They are working extremely hard. So I just thought to add that in there. Next question from my man Mark Clark. Ombre, what is your favorite Lord of the Rings character and why? Very tough question. I um, had to dwell upon this, but uh, I would say Eomer, and this has actually been probably my favorite character since I first saw the films. I read the books after seeing the films, by the way. Uh, but the reason I say this is because his position when he gets exiled from Rohan is so similar as to the political dissidents of today. He simply speaks the truth and gets exiled for it. Then, of course, he gets redeemed when uh, the truth appears and Gandalf drives off Saruman from uh, Theoden. So, a lot of cool characters to choose from. Obviously, Lord of the Rings is sacred for me, as is the case for many of you, I suppose. So, a lot of cool characters to choose from, but just considering that situation and it's so applicable to our own situation that he gets exiled uh, from his own nation for speaking the truth is um, yeah it's a it's a cool um, metaphor surprise clip into the video I stumbled upon this highly epic place and since we're talking about Lord of the Rings let me show you Looks a bit like a modern world version of the entry to the Mines of Moria. So anyway, I thought this would be a fun little surprise in the 
in the Q&A video. So um, yeah, let's get back to it. Now a note, I really need to stop saying epic to everything because this place wasn't really epic at all, as I'm sure you will agree. Next question from Ian. What advice do you have for a first time father? Any advice you wish you knew before your princess came into the world? To be quite honest, not really. This is one of these cases where you you aren't ready, but you get ready. So just view it as a learning process and take every day as it is, take each step as it is and just try to yeah deal with every situation. But you can't really be ready per se because you become ready when, uh, when the child comes. So um, yeah, just approach it with a stoic mindset and remember, don't be worried because this is something fathers have done since um, the beginning of time basically, so um, I'm sure you will do gallantly fine also. Next question from Matthäus. Dear the Golden One, a couple of fitness related questions I would like to ask. One, is there a specific routine you do for stretching and mobility during the week? Yes, there is. Just search for stretching on my channel and you will find my daily stretches. A very good video if I may be so bold. Secondly, I've been interested in joining an MMA class. Would you suggest just joining straight in or practice and get some basics down, get some basics down beforehand? Thanks for all of your efforts, Matthäus. And thank you for your support. Much appreciated. I would just get straight into a beginner's class. The point with beginner's classes is that you learn the basics together. For me personally, as a um, coach i do coaching sometimes um, on average about once a month or something like that if i say you know this seminar or this class is for beginners yeah it means we will go through the basics together so i'm not expecting anyone to come in to know all the different footworks and head movement drills etc that's why you come to a class to learn so uh, i would just go for a beginner's class uh, talk to the guys at the gym say you know what is this good for beginners class or is there something i can do to prepare but usually what i recommend is if you are in relatively good condition you aren't hurt or anything just go to a beginners class and be as attentive and humble as possible try to learn the basics the next question is from my man helvetic john dear marcus how do you deal with leftists in your everyday life as an example, I recently started buying my food and helping at a little shop promoting local farms, regional production and nature-friendly products. So a great ideology, which I'm sure you support. Yes, most definitely I do. That's exactly what, um, what we need. So I salute you wholeheartedly for that. However, as you can imagine, this kind of place attracts mostly hippies and other kinds of beta leftists, which I have to interact with and maintain decent relationship with, relationships with in order to benefit from this great business model. Your thoughts would be much appreciated. Many thanks. And thank you for your continued support. Uh, yeah, I would just try to maintain a good relationship. Not all leftists are 100% evil. Uh, simple as that. They might be misguided when it comes to uh, matters of bioculture and immigration, etc. But obviously they have the heart at the right place when it comes to supporting their local communities. So they are nationalists or traditionalists without even knowing it. So uh, yeah, they, by the sound of it, they might be more nationalist than... Um, some actual nationalists if uh, that makes sense but for me i would say you know maintain a good relationship you don't need to agree with everyone 100 percent and i say this to all subscribers as well you're free to disagree with me people have different worldviews you can try to talk to them if you want but if you don't want i see absolutely no problem with just keeping um, the good thing you have going so uh, yeah i yet again i salute you for this endeavor and i think that's a very good step in the right direction. Next question from my man Chris. I have a lifting related question, good sir. How do you feel about focusing on the negative when lifting in an attempt to get stronger? I 
do not recommend this because my view on strength training and getting stronger, powerlifting, uh, building muscle, everything like that is simply that you have a few different exercises, the heavy compound movements, so deadlifts, bench, squats, military press, rows, for example. Your goal is to get as strong and in these as possible. Getting stronger is easier if you do all repetitions explosively. So if I want to move as much weight as possible in the bench press, if I do the movement explosive, it will be easier. Therefore, I can use more weight. So I tend to do it as explosively as possible. And this is true for all exercises. So I would just, on the down part, on the negative, just do it controlled but not excessively slow. Because then you burn out energy you might want to have for the, the upward phase of the lift. Next question from my man Paul Clark. Has your training changed or your attitude towards training changed since your darling daughter came into the world? How has having a child changed your view in other regards also? Much love, big man, from Debrit Valda. Much love right back to you and to your family. Uh, it hasn't changed overly much, actually. The main thing is that I try to be a bit more flexible and I try to, if possible, have a bit shorter sessions. But even before my Cuddle Princess came into the world, I trained quite short sessions because I usually just focus on the heavy compound movements. So it hasn't changed overly much in regards to training, except for it has happened a few times that I need to cut a session short because of reasons, but that's just to be expected. Otherwise, it's been certain days if um, life comes in between and I can't train. Yeah, it is what it is. I just train the next day. So it's not something that is overly different, uh, usually even before stuff came in between. So I had to uh, train less, but it is what it is. It's no, uh, no big deal. In regards to your second question, it's probably a lot of different perspectives that I don't even know about, but uh, which is slowly changing how I think about things. But generally, no, my worldview is quite similar to what it was previously. Next question from my man, Robert Green. What is your take on the fact that the statistics show the majority of suicides are committed by white males? Why is this such an issue among our people? How do we stop it? Let's go champ. Let's go champ! Shout out to my man, Rob. Um, yeah, it is uh, a tough question. I've touched upon this previously too. A shorter answer would be the lack of meaning, uh, the lack of community, the lack of purpose. So this is actually a video I will make a separate video on, which will be called Suicide, How to Prevent It. But I just thought to uh, answer it briefly here as well to just give a um, my main reasons for why I see uh, young white males killing themselves. Then, of course, there are a concoction of different uh, factors that contribute as well, such as Big Pharma, I don't think, especially in America, where these large corporations uh, yeah, play uh, dangerous games with human lives. And that is also why you can't have unbridled capitalism, uh, you know, big companies doing what they want. The state must control when certain companies are doing uh, really detrimental things to the population, such as this case. But yeah, we'll elaborate more in a coming video. Next question from Thomas. Salutations. What are your thoughts on the movement of people going off grid? On one hand, people are living sustainable, low consumption lifestyles, unreliant on the replacers who rule over us. On the other hand, people are disengaging from society and taking a back seat. And it also makes it near impossible to visit the Temple of Iron. I think a good balance between the two. You should never check out from society and disengage in politics ever. Because in the famous words of someone, I don't know who coined it, but... You may not care about politics, but politics cares about you. So you can live as much off-grid as you want, but if the state wants to come knocking on your door, they will do it no matter how far out in the woods you live. So I would say be as self-reliant as possible. It's good to live in the countryside. It's good to have as much, to take as much care of yourself as possible without being reliant upon society. But you must never disengage from the political discussion of your country. So I would say it is good on one side as long as you don't neglect the notion that you're still in the society because you can't escape your society as much as you want to. Simple as that. Next question from Andre. 
Greetings, Glorious One. Seeing that you've taken an interest on Western Price's work, I'm curious on hearing what are your thoughts on the raw carnivore slash primal diet. Thank you and keep up the good work. You are an inspiration. Thank you for the kind words and thank you for your support. I would say that the majority of the carnivore diet is decent. It's good because if we look upon superfood, if I say superfood, some people might think it's about an exotic fruit from the Amazonas, but actually superfoods, especially for Europeans, are meat. It is meat. So if we look upon something like bacon, a lot of people think it's unhealthy. Sure, it might be high in calories, but it's good animal fat. I will actually make a separate Gains Kitchen video on the um, this superfood that is bacon. Uh, but generally speaking, humans are evolved to eat meat. Not only meat, not exclusively meat, but if you base your diet, the mainstay of your diet, upon animal fats and meats, um, you can thrive. Whereas I don't really see the same evidence for vegans being able to thrive on their diet. So generally speaking, I would say base your diet upon meats and animal fats. But again, if you want to fuel your workouts in the Temple of Iron, you might need some carbohydrates as well. And you might need some carbohydrates to liven up your diet. I wouldn't go on a full carnivore diet, but I understand people are heavily using uh, that sort of setup, but uh, I don't see any reason to cut out carbs completely, uh, especially since it can be quite a hustle to do so in um, in an everyday life. But uh, yeah, to conclude, animal fats and meats are good for you, for your mental health and your physical health. And the last question from James, a bit more of a light-hearted question. Do you have any hope for the upcoming Lord of the Rings television series produced by Amazon? I have absolutely zero hope for that. As I said in the beginning of this video, Lord of the Rings is sacred for me, so I will, to the best of my ability, encourage people to boycott the new Amazon series and ask them to downvote it and ask them to generally cause a lot of noise in regards to it, because I know exactly what they will do. They will take Tolkien's great world and transform it into a politically correct quagmire of blasphemy basically so to answer the last question there no i have absolutely no hope at all but we still have the films which are our masterpieces definitely so anyway thank you all for your questions and for your support if you would like to ask questions sign up on my patreon first link in the description box below have a great rest of your day xxo boom